Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. Today I am making my world famous freezer breakfast burritos. Okay, maybe they're not world famous, but when I put them on Insta, you guys blow up my DMs asking for the recipe. So I figured I'd bring them here to YouTube, show you exactly how to make them, and yeah. Before I get into that though, I just want to take a minute to remind you to please subscribe and like this channel to help support me and let me know you guys want to keep seeing this content and I'll keep making videos for you guys. All right, let's get to it. I love this recipe because it only takes five ingredients. All you need are eggs, sausage. This is my favorite sausage. It's from Aldi. I got it for under $2 when I was there this past weekend. So favorite, tastes so good. Next, you'll need some potatoes, some bacon, and then some tortillas. I like them a little bit bigger because I think they make a better burrito. And first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and brown the sausage in here. And the reason why I do the sausage first is so then once I remove the sausage, I can put the potatoes in here and the potatoes are gonna grab some of that yummy sausage flavor. I'm gonna start breaking it up. You know, I got one of those Pampered Chef black tools. Let me show you. It's nearby. I got one of these Hickamadoos. Do you guys have these? I actually ordered it from Amazon, but Pampered Chef makes it. So freaking excited for this because I've heard wonderful things. And you know, I didn't have great luck with it. I thought the meat kept sticking in here and is making me mad. You know what, let's go give it another go. If it doesn't work, we'll go back to the wooden spoon. I want it to work, I really do. I don't. Do you see this? Does this happen to anyone else? I mean, I see people use these in their videos and it looks like it's working, but it's not, I can't do this guys. I can't do it. I'm going back to the classic wooden spoon and I don't know, I might have to throw this out. I feel like once the meat is cooked, it works, but <sighs> not at the beginning. Clunk. All right, so let's use this. Just gonna try to make it small because it cooks up super, super fast when you do that. You guys, you know what's funny? I see people post these YouTube videos all the time and you have these women with their hair down and especially like really long, beautiful hair and it's down. And all I think of when I see these videos is there's gonna be hair in that food. Like how, how is there not hair in the food? I think maybe it's from my history in the food industry and living in fear that there's going to be a hair in one of my customers' cookies. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are familiar with one of my previous lives, but this past November, um, my husband and I closed a business we had. And for the past three years, I was doing it full time and it was a custom baking business. Um, it started out as cupcakes and cake pops and then it turned into like 98% custom sugar cookies. And so that is what I did full time for three years. And just being in the food industry, you know, you're just, I guess, more careful about things like bacteria and you know, I always make sure my food is cool before I, you know, put a lid on it and put it in the fridge or freezer. I always wear my hair up when I'm cooking, like even obviously just cooking for my husband and I when I food press, my hair is always up. I don't even like eating with my hair down, honestly. And you know, like my nails, we weren't allowed to have our nails painted. You couldn't touch food um, without gloves if it was done cooking, like if the customer was gonna touch it at that point. It was just a lot. So it's always interesting to me when I see these YouTubers and their hair is down. And I just, you know, maybe I guess, you know, you do it for the gram and you do it for the tube. Do people say that? Do it for the tube? I mean, I guess I can understand you look more attractive. I mean, I just wash my hair and it looks like greasy and gross up in my little like 
double French braids, but you know, whatever. My husband and I are gonna be eating this and I don't want hair in it. All right, do you guys see how fast this is coming along? It's almost done, but I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward it here so you don't have to watch this in real time. Looks like it's done. I'll try to tilt you in if you can see it. It's nice and brown. Let's go ahead and get it off the heat and start letting it cool. To assemble this, I do like having everything cool first before I mix everything. And you know what? I just realized I forgot to tell you there's cheese involved in this. Of course there's cheese. What's a recipe without cheese? <laughs> and so I like all my ingredients cooled down because I actually don't like the cheese to melt in this um, when I assemble it. Some people do, so if that's you, maybe you don't want to let this stuff cool at this point, but I want it to cool. And I also forgot to mention, this was 16 ounces of sausage. I didn't tell you that. You guys, I'm really not huge into measurements. I'm huge into, hey, whatever you have in the fridge, you're gonna make it work. Next up, let's dice some potatoes. All right, let us cut some potatoes. Now, I prepped these potatoes earlier. So to prep my potatoes, I went ahead, I cleaned them, and then, I bake them in the microwave for like six minutes. I am one of those people, if I'm gonna like fry up or saute, whatever you call potatoes on the stovetop, I like doing it after they've been cooked, kind of like repurposing a baked potato. I don't know why, but I never use raw potatoes directly on the stovetop. I'm gonna start adding these to the pan before I finish cutting them, just because I don't really have room here. So I'm gonna go ahead, heat this pan again, a little bit less than medium. I am going to add some butter. I like potatoes and butter. I feel like it just makes sense. We do already have some fat from the sausage, but if you look at it, it's not much at all. So I'm gonna go ahead, add three little tiny pats of butter. That's probably equal to a little less than a tablespoon. Go ahead and add it. I'm gonna salt and pepper them once I get everything cut up. So stay tuned. I'm just gonna keep on cutting these potatoes. All right, let me move these things around so I can show you guys a better view of the potatoes. I'm gonna turn down the heat a little bit because I don't want them to cut, cook too fast and get burned. But right now, I'm gonna add lots of salt and pepper. So the key to making anything that tastes good is flavoring every single aspect like you're gonna eat it by itself. Don't just flavor at the end. You need to flavor all the way along the way. Keep that in mind. If you're going to flavor something or if you're gonna eat something, flavor every step of the way like you were going to eat it by itself. And that's just kind of a good rule of thumb. This is actually a dish that I make all the time for new mamas. So, if in the past two years you have had a baby and I have come to see you in that baby, there is a very, very good chance I brought you some breakfast burritos because they are a great one-handed food that you can eat while holding your new baby and everyone loves it. It's a crowd pleaser. Kids love it, husbands love it, the mamas love it, so. This is a great treat to take your new mom. I'm gonna add a little bit more salt and pepper. I know it seems like a lot, but there are a lot of potatoes here. And I also, I use pink Himalayan salt, and it's not as strong as regular salt. I like it because it's so much better for you because it's actual salt that your body needs, not like white iodine, how do you say that? You know, the white table salt. That is stripped of any nutritional value. Your body does not need a single bit of it. All right, let's fast forward, shall we?
Okay, I think I'm gonna call this done. Let's go ahead and turn off the heat. And put these in a bowl. Bowl. What's a bowl? <laughs> put these in a bowl to cool down. Also, I forgot to tell you the measurement on this. This is about two pounds of potatoes. You guys, I often see the potatoes, those giant bags of potatoes, for as low as 99 cents. I mean, I really mean it when I say this is a frugal meal. Tortillas, I got 36 tortillas for $4.99, which is the most expensive thing on here, and we'll find out how many I actually use of that. Eggs are a very, very inexpensive protein. You can get them for like, depending on where you live, 99 cents to probably $2. And I'm not even gonna use a full dozen, so it won't even be that much. The sausage was under $2. What am I missing? Bacon, get bacon on sale, that's what I always do. And then some butter, salt, and pepper if you want it. Super frugal. All right, I'm gonna put this to the side to cool off. So I'm gonna use 10 eggs for this recipe. Why 10? I have no idea. It's what I made the first time and I kind of stuck with it. I'm gonna guess that the first time I made these, I had 10 eggs available to me. If I'm gonna be 100% honest. I just really, I hate <laughs> using recipes. I just, and it's hilarious I didn't do a very good job with that egg. It's hilarious that somehow I was a baker because I hate measuring things. And I hate rules like, don't tell me that I only need one clove of garlic. I'm gonna add five. One clove of garlic, what a joke, you guys. Who else is team garlic? Does anyone actually follow the recommended garlic amount in any recipe? I'd really like to know who you people are. If that is you, please. Let the rest of us know in the comments below. We would love to hear from you. Last one. Let's whisk these guys up. We're gonna just give them a quick little whisk. If they'll kind of break up. How do you guys like your eggs? I'm like really going through a scrambled phase right now. I am gonna scramble these for this recipe if that wasn't 100% clear at this point. But in real life, in my usual non-freezer breakfast burrito life, I've really been going through a scrambled phase. I, uh, I used to like them fried hard. I don't usually love egg yolks soft, unless it's Eggs Benedict. I do love Eggs Benedict. But other than that, for some reason, I don't love a soft yolk. And I do like my eggs completely cooked through. Like, there's nothing grosser than a not cooked white on an egg that's so gross almost got it all right I'm gonna call that a day salt and pepper always along the way I'm gonna be pretty heavy-handed because we have 10 eggs in here as a reminder lots of salt again I'm using pink Himalayan salt so it is not as strong as regular salt as well. I don't put butter in my eggs, and you guys, all it is is eggs. I don't add anything else to my eggs. That's just how I am. I'm very basic, but I do spray the pan with some Pam, any flavor, I really don't care. I have a butter one, but this was closest to me. So that's what I'm using. We'll do these pretty low and slow. Bring you a little bit closer. I do like to kind of keep them moving and grooving when I make scrambled eggs. I feel like it just, it just works. More salt and pepper? Yes, please. Hopefully this won't make me sneeze this time. If I can't see it, it's not, there's not enough in there. I'm gonna call these done and we're gonna go ahead and get these cooled while we make our last item. Just so you know, if I was not filming this, I would not be making these things one by one. If I was doing this on a normal basis, I'd probably have two things going at once. I do like to give the potatoes the sausage flavor, so we do like using the same pan for those. 
but I probably have the eggs going in a separate pan just to make this a little bit faster. It's bacon time. I normally don't make my bacon in the oven. I usually do it in the microwave when it's just my husband and I, when I'm just cooking like a few pieces for us. But since I'm cooking more than usual and that's not gonna fit on one plate, I'm gonna do it in the oven. Let me tell you how many pieces I'm making. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces. And the very specific reason why I'm making seven pieces bacon today is because that's what I have left. And you know what? Like I said, I don't like rules when it comes to cooking. I'm gonna do what I want with what I have and make it work. You guys do what you need to do to make it work. If you don't like bacon, don't use it. If you don't want to use sausage and bacon, don't. I don't care. I'm not going to come to your house. This recipe is a light guideline to give you an idea of what to do and how to do it. And if you like following recipes, then do this to a T. That's totally fine with me too. All right, I've got my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of bacon. I'm getting the oven set to 400. I'll let you know how long it takes at the end. And next time I see you, this bacon's gonna be yummy and done. And just like that, they're done. Some a little too done. I'm gonna go ahead, let these cool for a second. I'm gonna chop them up and I'll be right back. Everything is pretty much cool now. I'm gonna go ahead and stir this all up. So there is a good amount of potatoes, probably close to the same amount of eggs, just because I wanna like add some bulk on the cheeps. But again, do what you can with what you have and call it a day. You guys might think I'm nuts. I'm going to salt and pepper one more time here. If you ask my husband, you can never have too much of either of them. No matter how much I add when I'm cooking, I swear he always adds more when we're eating. I do not take offense. I really do not care. It is what it is. But knowing that, I do try, I try to get it right. <laughs> All right, just kidding. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and add the cheese. I normally don't measure this out, but for you guys, I'm going to try. Also, you guys, I love these. I've had these forever since I lived in New York City in a tiny little apartment. I still only have two tiny little drawers in my condo, so they come very much in handy. Let's go ahead and measure this cheese out. I think we're gonna do two cups. I think that's, that's gonna be what we want. All right, basically two cups. So let's start there and see what happens. Boop. Yeah, that should be good. We don't need too much cheese. All right, did I just say that? Who says such things? Seriously, what's wrong with me? All right, mixture is good to go. Now we're finally going to assemble these guys and see how many we end up with. So I pre-cut 15 things of foil. I'll count this one out so we can see how much is going in. And again, I think I want a little more than last time. So you see, that's a really big spoonful. And I'll just do a little bit more to top it off. I think that looks like a good amount. Let's see if I can shut it though. That is the key. Get back in there. Don't abandon us. I need you to shut. But don't worry, once you freeze it, it actually helps it stay shut. That's pretty good. You can see it's like roughly the size of my hand. I'm a girl, so my hands aren't huge, but that's it. I'm gonna keep on rolling these and I'll see you once I'm done. Something to note here, um, again, I'm using flour tortillas. A lot of people recommend if you're going to roll your tortillas, you see it's fine, to heat them up because they say they don't break as easily. However, I will say with flour tortillas, I don't, you see, I know the light is kind of wonky. I usually don't see breakage. So again, you guys, with this recipe, this is just a base recipe. Do with the food you like that your family is gonna eat or that works for your dietary restrictions. You can put turkey bacon in here or turkey sausage, chicken sausage, and you can even omit the potatoes if you want or put sweet potatoes. It's just super customizable and a super, super easy recipe. 
And that's it. I ended up making 14 freezer breakfast burritos. And you guys, this is very, very frugal. So the total for these 14 freezer breakfast burritos was $5. Everything is already cooled here. They're already individually portioned. Next, I'm gonna put it in a freezer safe bag. You can see we have used this one many times. I'm gonna cross off the date again, use it again. And then we're gonna put the burritos in here and then our freezer. And then when it's time to take them out and eat them, you're gonna take them out of the foil. For the love of God, please do not put the foil in the microwave. So take it out of the foil and then microwave it for about a minute. I know everyone's microwaves are very different, so it might be more or less. Once in a while, it'll I'll use a microwave that it'll just be ice cold still in one minute. So if that's the case, I just kinda open it after a minute and then let it cook for another 30 seconds or something with the burrito open and then close it up once it's done. That seems to do the trick. But this is a great thing to have on the go to take these to work or even have like my husband and I will have these at dinner in a pinch. We'll add salsa or like an Ortega sauce, something like that. Super, super good. Thank you once again for joining me on my channel. I really hope you like this video. Please be sure to give this a thumbs up to let me know you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.